American football in Finland. The voice in your ears is Perfect Purvis, and this is American Football in Finland. Today, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Coach Q, Spencer Cutlin, and Chris Green. We got a whole new show, fellas. What's going on, guys? Everybody say what's up. What's up? What's going on? What's up? What's up? Meet that cool, How's it going, guys? You good? The AFF podcast is available on Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Podbean, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Seriously, though, American Football and Finland is currently available on more than 25 different platforms. So wherever you listen, be sure to rate us. Anything less than five stars will tell us that you are a hater. Welcome to Season 7, the Season 7 of AFF. And just want to take the time personally to apologize to our audience for the lack of podcast consistency last season. We got caught up in the social media game, you know, likes, clicks, and all that. And we lost sight of what really matters, talking football. So we're back to the bases this year. Uh, we'll be here each week giving people what they want. So before we even get into the show, let's talk about off season. How was everybody's off season? Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and how excited you are to be back. Hey, uh, my off-season has been great. I became a dad. Oh, congratulations. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Congrats. Yeah. yeah, so I got a little broke roommate now. But, yeah, that's how my off-season went, man. It's pretty much uh, uh, definitely different for me from what I'm used to. But, you know, new life. What about you, Spence? What's going on with you? I'm going to the season without football, which is odd. But, uh, you know, we, we move on and all that jazz. So that's why I wanted to come back into this. So, you know, get back into it in some facet, facet. but yeah, just, uh, just living basic life, to be honest, nothing too special, nothing going on. The weight's going up, the age is going <laughs> up, so I uh, need some youth back in me. So uh, hopefully we get it from the pod. Yeah. What about you, Chris? Um, well, I've, I've just secured my first permanent teaching job as well mm. in the off season. So I'm, I'm teaching PE full time now here. In the UK, living the dream. Okay, and, okay. Yep, yeah, yeah. And I've been um, commentating on the, the UE Bullets University live streams on their home games uh, every game this season. And they had a lot of American scholars this year, so it was a real good level of football. And they got to the championship game and won the championship game against UON. And it was a fantastic game, a real good spectacle for the sport as well. If anyone managed to catch that, it was a good game. I mean, if anybody knows me, y'all know in all season, I hibernate. It's cold as shit in Finland, so <laughs> excuse my language. You know, I stayed in Lati. This is where I was. I don't like to tell my business. Everybody else is sharing, so I'll share a little bit. You know, December through January, I was out of here. I was actually in the States in Texas and Miami um, doing some work, getting that good weather in. Came back to this, you know, Finnish winter. Took a, a quick trip to Amsterdam with the AFF Team Revolution 7-on-7 squad. Almost won a championship out there. That was super fun, you know, working with the kids. Hadn't done that in a while. Um, but other than that, you know, taking care of my family and hibernating. That's me. If y'all want to see anything else I'm doing, you know, follow me on the Instagram, at Perfect Purpose, and, you know, that's how you follow me. So uh, we'll get on into the show, guys. We like to preview each team before the season. So today we'll talk about the Helsinki Roosters, who are last year's Maple Bowl runners up. Coach Q, so you're going to tell us a little bit about how the Roosters can reclaim the Maple League title, man. Just to throw out some of the biggest changes that's going on with the Roosters right now, Miro uh, is out. He announced his retirement in 2021, said he was done playing. I would say 2022 season for the Roosters right now is a rebuilding season. And that sounds kind of different than what we used to hearing from the Roosters. But don't get me wrong, they still sign players to compete. They still, I think, plan on being in the, one of the top teams. Um, but they just kind of got a lot of older guys out now, a lot of newer guys in. Um, a lot of younger guys are going to get a lot of play this year. Like I said, Miro was out, so a new quarterback, Bryce Stancombe, fresh out of college, ready to come and, and make his mark in Europe, and he's, and he's stopping in Finland first. He has a big arm. The guy can put up numbers. Not as agile as 
as most quarterbacks would probably be in a, in a certain system, but he, he has an arm, he can throw, moves pretty good, he looks pretty good on film from what I see right now. If anybody knows the history of the Roosters, like we all do, it doesn't matter who's the quarterback for this team because they're just so together and so loaded most years that they just know how to win. Like It doesn't matter who, who comes in. That person just has to come in and learn that, hey, this is what we do. Find your place and let's keep it moving. That's what Bryce has to do. Um, the Roosters also signed some some other guys. Emery Polly, big play, can return, kick returner, punt returner, big play guy. The Roosters, you know, they, they, they're they picking. They can pick pretty much who they want to come play for them. So they got some of the top athletes that were, that were available this year. So if they can establish a consistent offense where they're scoring 30, 40 points a game, They'll definitely be in the top two teams um, at the end of the season. Other than that, defensive dominance is something that they have to claim. If you want to beat Corpio, you want to beat, uh, you want to stop people like Powell. You have to. Your defense has to be dominant, not just making plays sometimes, but they have to actually go into games and control how the game goes. And then they'll be a, a top team. O line. I've been hearing some rumors that the Roosters are signing O linemen, not one or two, but multiple. For that reason, I believe the, a lot of the Roosters uh, offensive linemen that, that have been there, they signed to play in other leagues, which is probably forcing the Roosters to have to sign O linemen. The Roosters are, are doing some signing outside of uh, Finland, which is different too. So the Roosters are going to be the Roosters. I'm not going to dwell on them too much. Everybody knows the history of them and what, they, what they're going to bring to the table in the season. So there was just some small, little noticeable things that changed in the offseason with them. And uh, having a new offensive coordinator, so that might be a little different for their offense. The Roosters are going to be the Roosters. I have no I, no, no doubt in my mind that they won't come up and contend and, and be one of the top teams. So, Vince, what, what are your thoughts on some of those changes for the Roosters? You know, the key fact there is that the Roosters have always been successful with whoever's been QB. We've brought in a finished QB and they win. And that's no knock on Miro because I think he's the GOAT. But like, no matter who they brought in, they've always had a system. So how does the new dynamic of having a new quarterback and a new OC. How does that work? And um, I think for the Roosters, the key now is the transition into the new age. You know, they've got a lot of young players, but that that old sort of core, you know, like uh, actually all in your Miro, Kadmade, you know, your Santo Aravain, and they're all going or they're on the edge now. You know, families come into it, you know, bigger commitments in terms of what they're doing in their life post-football. So how are we going to create this new sort of era of the Roosters. And I think that starts this year. The biggest change I think that you said was that the Roosters will be the Roosters. Like they always change. There's always something different about them and you can't ever count them out because they are the Roosters. I think the biggest change is that they adapt to change. It's crazy. Q, what are some of the things the Roosters will have to overcome this season? They have a lot of changes, and we know what they can, what they need to do to win, but what are going to be some of those things standing in the way of that success? I think first is being able to deal with inexperience and what comes along with players that don't have that game experience. Certain situations that they're used to getting out of, they won't, and it's not because they're not good enough. It's just they won't get that type of play yet from those guys in certain positions. You want those guys to make plays and you want them to give all they got. But, you know, Santu, he's been around a long time. He knows what teams want to do in certain situations. And that's something that you can't pay for, you can't hope for. It just has to be in a player. It'll be interesting to see if they have those type of guys that maybe surprises, maybe can make those plays. Being able to deal with the inexperienced guys, being able to adjust on the field, on the fly, halftime, being able to adjust knowing that you don't have those dominant players in certain positions anymore. Uh, What are you going to do now? What's what's the next move? And the second thing I would say, obstacles are overcome. I mean, the the obvious, the Corpio Steelers. (laughs) The Corpio Steelers right now probably feel like they're the next six, six run. You know, they want to win every championship. The Roosters are still the Roosters, but they're not the champion Roosters. That does something to you when you when you used to winning championships and then all of a sudden you like not winning championships. You you try to say, oh, okay, we don't really focus on it, but that they do. They're gonna have to find a way to play better than Corpio when it when it comes down to it during the season and in the playoffs. Do you think that, you know, the Roosters 
main goal, my main identity for this season is, you know, how do we match up against the Steelers? Like, is that is that one of the things that they mostly should be focusing on? I mean, obviously, everybody's got to be respected week to week and all that blase, blase. But let's let's talk real talk. Like, if you were the coach, let's ask Coach Q if he was in a situation. Mm. Is that what you would go into the season trying to make sure that your team was better or could at least compete toe to toe with the Quopio Steelers? Is that your measuring stick? Um, if I put out a statement of if, if we're saying that we're rebuilding in mm-hmm. 2022, rebuilding to me means that I'm taking a minimum, the the minimum imports. I'm gonna let my younger guys just get that playing time and get that experience, whether we win or lose. Okay. To me, that's rebuilding. Um, you can bring in a quarterback and kind of have somebody that's a leader and a veteran that can teach them how to, you know, how to have heart and kind of show them certain things. But I feel like the Roosters are signing people, a defense, they got an edge rusher. They signing people to win too. I'm pretty sure you is saying we got to get better guys. We got to get better. But at the end of the day, he's there to win championships. Maybe he isn't driving it to championship, championship every practice. When you rebuild, you got to tell you guys, we're taking it one game at a time because you don't want them to be overconfident. You don't want them to be too anxious. You just want them to like gradually get better week to week. At the end of the day, everybody's in those in that stands and that are watching this game and that support the Roosters are thinking championship. There's no doubt in my mind they're not thinking about it because they signed some players. Like not just average players either. They signed some really good players to to help them win. So we'll see. Steelers are bust, right? That's what I think. Uh, yeah. First game of the season, that's when we find it all out, right? Every time we talk about the Roosters, now we're gonna talk about the Steelers because that's that's how they go hand in hand. They've had some pretty significant first game of the seasons over the last couple of seasons. Like they've set the tone for different seasons. Going back to, I think the first time they played, I think the Roosters put a whooping on them that was unnecessary. And then the next year, the Steelers shocked the nation and, and upset them. And then I think last year, I think the Steelers won again, but it was more an average type of game. So this get, this year will be just as interesting. Spencer, what do you think about the Steelers and their chance to, you know, reclaim the Maple League title this season? The core is still there. And that's, I think that's the key with all Finnish teams is that if you have that core, you can, you can build on that to win. And that's what Q alluded to in the whole, like, we're going through some changes now in the Roosters. And that core needs to be like, what I put here is Dynasty 2.0, two years removed from a championship. Now, Yuha is implementing those things to be Dynasty 2.0. How do we bring these new guys and implement that Rooster mentality and then go from there? If you're listening, I think that we've said this a lot in this segment. I want to say we've said that the Roosters are going to have a new players. It's going to be a different, you know, look. These guys don't have the same amount of experience. I don't want people to misunderstand what we're saying because I feel like it could be misconstrued that, oh, the Roosters are bringing in this whole new team. No, 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 no. These guys are inexperienced compared to what they had, not in general. A lot of these younger or inexperienced players that the Roosters are bringing in, they've played in the Maple League. They've been there. They've been on the sideline. They've seen the championship. They've experienced the championship. You got guys on this team who they have they have two championships in their back pocket already. They were on the team. They might not have been contributing as much as they would have liked, but they were on the sideline. They were at the practices. They were putting in the work. They were waiting their time. And now they're going up. It's similar – if you if you know football in the states, they run it like Alabama does. Alabama constantly sending people to the league. If all your players going to the league, how are you still going to the championship every year? Because sit right behind them, players are just as good players, just waiting for their chance. Just because you're not the starter doesn't mean you're a bum. And one thing that the Roosters have always had is they've always had depth. They don't get a lot of injuries on their team which means their starters play a lot. The Dynasty, Dynasty 1.0, blowout teams let your backups play the second half. A lot of these players that have been playing those second halves, now you're starters. So I don't want anybody out there listening to what we're saying, thinking that, oh, the Roosters are going to come out with this brand new team. No, they might be a little younger than what you're used to. might not be the same names that we're used to calling out, but these players know how to play. But what we're going to see in this season is, are they – able to take that 2.0 step like what Q said. And just like you said, Spencer, the core is still there. Players that will be the stars for the Roosters going forward, those guys were there when they won those, when they were having that first string. They might not have been contributing, but they were there. And now we get to see 
who's going to be, you know, the new age contributors. I think that the Roosters have every bit of a good a chance as anybody else to win the title this year. We're going to find out how good that coaching staff is this season. In seasons past, we've always said, you know, the Roosters, they have a lot of coaches and have really good coaching staff. As much as we, we claim that, we've also always been able to say, you know, most of the national team players play for this team. The best players in Finland play on this team. So, yeah, you can have great coaches, but it's not hard to coach great players. Now that we're looking at a different roster, you're looking at players that don't have that same in-game experience that the, the past had. So there's going to be coaching that you have to do that you didn't have to do before. Like you said, when you, you brought up perfectly name is Santu Aravainen, who I don't care what y'all say, he'll end up on the field at some point this season. He always does. <laughs> but um, that's a guy that when you put him on the field, you say, go do your thing. And then you go, you start worrying about something else as a coach. You don't worry about him on the field. He knows all the checks are made. He knows what to look for on the opposition side. He knows what he's trying to do. But then I put in his, you know, backup and it's like, yeah, I trust that he knows what to do. But in the heat of the moment, he might not be able to make these type of adjustments. So I have to make sure I put him in a better situation than I did Santu. So we're going to see how good these guys coach. And that's going to be very apparent on the offensive side where their offensive line coach is now the offensive coordinator. So instead of just working on, you know, the line play, pass coverage, I mean, pass protection and run blocking schemes, he's now coordinating offense, calling the plays. Uh, You bring in a a professional college quarterback, seven years in college, he's going to have some things that he can bring to that team to help alleviate the stress for the coaches. So it'll be really interesting to see. There's one thing that we left out that I just got to say. Roosters game day experience. I expect it to be a one again this year, guys. I'll be coming to a couple of games. I want to see, uh, I want wings this year. Bring back the food truck. I really like that. Uh, make sure y'all got some gear. I'm not afraid to buy Roosters gear because it's like an investment. You know, it's, it's not like picking a team that's good one year and then bad the next year. Then you stuck with this gear and you can't use. I got a Deshaun Watson jersey that I can't use, you know. Roosters do a great game day vibe, and I really hope they keep that up this season. So shout out to the Roosters organization. The one thing I have for the safety of humanity is when are they going to move from the velodrome? (laughs) (laughs) Never. It was, I didn't care about playing the Roosters. It was like, yeah, okay, cool, never team. It was against the field. Why, Why are we still playing on 1940s technology? I don't get it. But it is their home. I get that, you know, like, like you said, that the Roosters experience, part of it is that you've got to overcome the field. But um, come on, man. It's 2022. As a group, we think that the Roosters have a great shot of being a contender this year. So we wish them the best of luck. That's it for this episode of American Football in Finland. Hope it was worth the listen. Any last words before we get out of here, guys? Q, got anything you want to say to the people out there? Uh, I'm just looking forward to the season, looking forward to some some great plays being made and seeing uh, what team is, is going to edge out at the front. First thing is for everyone to get their Rutu subscription to make sure they don't miss all the games so they know what we're talking about and just, yeah, just get on the season and get excited because like Q said, it's going to be a good one. What about you, Chris? I just can't wait for the season. It, it's definitely one of those years. I think it is still open. I don't think it's all going to be Corpio. I think there's a few teams that are going to be in contention and I can't wait to see uh, those matchups this year. It's going to be great. Yeah, we're excited for the season, man. Good luck to all the teams. If we say something you don't like, let us know. If we say something you do like, let us know. You know, we we enjoy, you know, when people tell us we're doing a good job as well as when we're doing it back. If you enjoy the show, please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Podbean, or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to give us five stars as well. Anything less will let us know that you are a hater. You can also follow us on the gram and Facebook at American Football in Finland. Until next time, never forget T I F. We go. American Football in Finland.